Harris going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. And his throw is incomplete. Bradley Marquez, the intended target. Third down here. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. And they're going to go soft on the corners. Goff now to throw. Cooper's got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock the defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Ataba Rubin makes the stop. Now it's gone. Tough day. Tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Throwing on third. Gone. Got a man. It's a tight end, Lance Kendricks. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. And the offense moving quickly to the line. So he makes the grab, and the chains move forward. Nice job by the offensive line giving them time to complete that first down pass. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. All right, partner, despite my eating habits, I'm not big enough to play offensive tackle, nor am I quick enough. But with the defensive ends nowadays and their speed, those guys have to be able to punch and dance, and it's a tough, tough job to contain them. My good friend, I'm just going to pose the question to you. Did that look like a pass that he should have thrown? Now, the rookie probably needs to be a little bit more careful in these situations. Yeah, that throw will turn him into a veteran quicker, but not in the way that he wants. He wants to learn his lessons by making good throws, not throws like that. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. The play clock's running down. To throw is gone. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. It's the Pro Bowl quarterback, Richard Sherman. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And so close to hitting pay dirt last time. Fumbling down near the goal line. Now, how does that affect their psyche this time around? It's a tester, that's for sure, because to be that close and come up with no points is really disappointing, not just for the guys on offense, but the defensive players, too, who thought, hey, we can put some points up and have a little momentum going. They've got to find a way to just... And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by T.J. McDonald. And the return will stop right around the 25. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And with three interceptions thrown already, we'll see. Do they, do they rely more on the ground game here? They may have to change things offensively to try and settle things down, not just for the guy throwing the ball, but for the rest of the offensive unit because his confidence has to be shaken a little bit. And you just wonder, is the backup going to start to warm up? And now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. From the two-yard line now, it's first and goal. Now it's Gurley. And he takes it across for a Rams touchdown. Todd Gurley taking it in for two yards out. And the Rams use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. Zerline now for the PAT. Oh, this is blocked. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. 
And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see when they decide to do a play caller because a one-play drive where you throw an interception. Doug Baldwin. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Doug Baldwin, 75 yards. And the Seahawks able to make this a close game again. Good pass, clean catch, and a house call there on the fly route. And not that much room to operate. So that tells you about his acceleration. We always talk about being able to go from 0 to 60 real fast. Took him less time than that to get to top speed and complete that play. Housh get out and send this one away following the score. Fielded about a yard deep. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good. So they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense, and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. Brian Quick, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. But at this stage of the game, time a factor, time on their side as they just try to eke out the final precious moments of this one. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete time for a break we're back to see what happens after this off on third down it's complete to Brent and some room to work there he goes left side touchdown Kenny Brent, 68 yards, and the Rams add on to their lead. Well, it'd be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now, but I'm looking at your face and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that. Well, it's a two-score game. You're inside of two minutes. I think you can breathe relatively easily now. Yeah, you can, but still, you got to stay vigilant. Can't give up anything cheap and easy. That could put you in some jeopardy. Uh-oh, flag comes out here. This is going to be roughing the kicker. When you're going back there on the kick block, you've got to go to the right point. That didn't happen. Ran into the kicker. The penalty flag had to come out. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drive is exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was really easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. And we'll see if it's that easy here. And he'll get it down deep into Los Angeles territory. A big play there on the catch and run. 65 yards. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. There's Wilson to throw. This will be caught at about the three. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second and goal. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. And there's the touchdown that they needed. So they'll celebrate, but the guys on the sidelines, they've got to stay focused. The onside kick team, they need them to get the ball back. Yeah, part one of the equation done. Now they need to convert and get that onside kick. Wilson going to throw for it. And he's got it for the two-point conversion. 
So they tack on a pair more here to narrow that deficit a bit further. Hauschka now to send this one away following the score. Fielded about a yard deep. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but it's still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Gurley again here on first down. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. That's another nice run, and I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. Some of the And now the Seahawks are going to call another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And frankly, Brandon, we're talking about things I'm not sure we ever thought we'd talk about in the NFL, and a lot of that is the speed at the linebacker position. A lot of these guys in college, they were safeties. They moved them up to outside linebacker to combat the spread offenses, and now we're seeing it in the NFL, those same guys using their speed to make plays in the backfield, similar to that one. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. The one running back is Gurley. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he's got Rome. Todd Gurley, wave goodbye. And he's across for the late touchdown. And in the final seconds, that one should just about put a capper on this game. So a little icing on the cake there before the clock hits all zeros. What a way to finish things off. Exactly what you want. Not much time and a touchdown to put things away. And they will line up now for the two-point try. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. They'll again try for two, this time from the seven. Goff looking to throw, and they don't get it. They tried for the two-point conversion there, but unsuccessful. Interesting call there. They went for two even after the penalty from the seven-yard line. It didn't pay off. I think the first thought is to go ahead and kick the extra point, but you're not kicking it from the seven-yard line. Yeah, right? that's get, not where snap. five back on the PAT as well. Right, so they have to take it from the 15 to administer the penalty. So now you're kicking it around 40 yards. So I understand why they probably went for two there. They thought they had a better play and a better chance in that situation. Now Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Now this is just an exercise in futility. Do you, do you even bother running a play here offensively? I wouldn't because now is not going to erase what's happened during the game. So after it's over, you're going to go to the film, find out where the game was really lost. But this is not a situation now where you're going to make up for anything. We'll see what they do here. First down, this is Rawls. Uses the stiff arm. And he'll take this for a short gain on what will prove to be the final play of this ball game. Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one. Certainly defensively, stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. 